listener production. Hey there and welcome to The Briefing. I'm Bensi on Seabet. Many of us put off thinking about old age and what our lives might look like in the final years. But maybe we really should be thinking about this stuff right now. It can affect everybody. One in five people will get dementia. So it's really so important that we start talking about it more often. That was Jonathan de Jong, the director of a recent documentary called Human Forever. It follows a young man from the Netherlands called Turn to Bez, who gave up three years of his life to live with people with dementia in aged care homes and closed wards. Why? He's on a quest to ensure better care not only for his parents, but eventually himself. He's 24 now, but he won't be forever. Here's director Jonathan de Jong's fascinating chat with The Briefing's Sasha Barbagat. Jonathan, thank you so much for joining us on The Briefing today. Look, this movie is pretty groundbreaking and I think the most incredible thing is seeing this 21-year-old man decide to give up his life for three years and live in aged care homes and closed dementia wards right across the country. What motivated Tern to do this? Tern was um, almost in the last phase of his uh, college to become a nurse. And then he experienced the life on the nursing home that it was also quite surprising for him because he dreamed about being a nurse on the, on the ER. But then when he came to the nursing home, it was completely different. And he experienced that the life of people with dementia, uh, when they are excluded from society, that it's really something else. And uh, he was so touched by the people he met over there that he decided that he wanted to live with them to experience more of the life, how we treat people with dementia in our own country, and especially to listen to those people, how they see their life and how they experience their lives. So um, that's why he made the bold decision to uh, go uh, live in a nursing home, yeah. Tell me what motivated you. Obviously, you in turn have similar kind of ideas about wanting to understand how we care for our elderly who suffer with dementia. What else was it that really drove you to want to make this film? Especially because during my college, I had a a job on the side where I was a bus driver in a nursing home. Once in two weeks, I had to come back to my parents and then I, uh, I had a weekend job. And then I was so surprised about the work because I know so little about dementia. But then I experienced so much joy in my work and I experienced so great relationships with the people I met over there. But on the other hand, I was so touched by also what the different side. When you come into a nursing home, you see like a parallel universe where people are wandering around the whole day behind closed doors, uh, uh, waiting to the day that that passes by. And it was so sad often uh, to leave them behind and see their sad faces that are excluded from society. So when I became a filmmaker after 11 years later, I really want to make my first series about dementia. I I did so. I I came to a a nursing farm where they had a really good quality of life for people with dementia. And I lived there for three months with them, not not in uh, the nursing home, but I was um, filming there for three months. And then I was so hopeful that there that we can uh, have a different approach on people with dementia, especially when we start to listen to them in uh, rather than organizing things because we treat them like a group. Mm. So you filmed in 11 countries over three years. What was that journey right. like for you in turn? And how did you find the differences between the countries that you visited in terms of the healthcare being offered to people with dementia? Of course, we started to, to look first just close around us in Belgium. Um, then we start going to Scandinavia because a lot of people in the Netherlands are always looking up to Scandinavia because they say after the Netherlands, maybe together with the Netherlands, they have the best healthcare system. So we were, we were really curious about why do we see them as an example? And especially when you put up the glasses and think like, okay, we're going to experience it and see for ourselves. That's why we see that we almost try to copy each other in the Western world because we have a lot of money comparing to a lot of other, other countries. We start to reach for products to help people with dementia instead of looking at the quality of life that they need. So that's why we also went to Africa. We went to Asia to see a lot of different systems, even though some countries, they don't have a healthcare system at all. And we really were curious, but when you don't have a system where, where money is such a big issue, how do people with dementia live over there? And we really felt 
heartwarming uh, examples on how that comes to the, the core of caring for each other. Because when there's uh, less welfare in a country, people are, start caring more for each other. And I think that's what we uh, forgot almost in the Western society to take care of each other more. Mm, that's so interesting that when uh, there's a welfare state, people go, oh, well, someone else will look after that issue. I don't need to worry about my parents or my grandparents because the yeah. state's got it. Is there a story or a particular moment that stands out to you from the film and from your time filming in these aged care homes with dementia patients? Yeah, the first thing that I was really amazed about was Moldova. It's the poorest country in Europe. It's close to the Russian border. And we were there just before the whole thing with the Ukraine started. But when we came there, uh, they have uh, psychiatric hospitals. Uh, they don't have something special for people living with dementia. So all the people with different kinds of needs uh, having strange behavior in, in the eyes of the people who are living there, they all come to the psych, uh, psychiatric hospital. And just because they have different needs, we saw the magic of that. So in the Netherlands, when you have dementia, all people with dementia come to the same house in a nursing home. And that's why you get the apathic uh, feel because they are not touched that easy. So when you have a house with a lot of uh, different ages and uh, a lot of different needs, they start to really form a, a household. And that's so important for a living environment that people can take care of each other. So they didn't need the, the, the nurses or the, or the, the staff that, like we do because they were really taking care of each other. Mm, that's really interesting. What other methods or, I suppose, approaches did you find were better, I suppose, than the way that we do it in a lot of countries in the Western world in terms of, you know, closed wards and, you know, meals together and everyone in this one place kind of unable to really be part of society. Were there any other ways that you saw during filming that you thought, why aren't we implementing this more? So many, so many. <laughs> it's like uh, unbelievable. If you have a different approach, if you're being uh, a bit more modest and say like, what can we learn from you? You get so many perspectives that you didn't uh, think about when you're having a, a view on how, how, how the system is built but because people are having more insights. For instance, in the Netherlands, also a bit closer to home, they had a fantastic thing where they had open doors. Everybody was free to go. And uh, the manager over there, they, she always says, you have to uh, seduce people. If you make a nursing home a real home with a living environment, with animals, with with, with normal f furniture, where you can, like just, just like a normal home, people don't want to leave. And especially when you open the doors, the fear of being locked up is almost already gone. So, of course, sometimes people want to, want to go away and then they say you can go away and that eases the people so much that they really say like okay but then it feels really like more like a home so they rather stay than go outside where it's a bit more uncertain for them and that's what what, what we also experienced because the the person who wants to go away he stepped outside walked for 10 15 meters and said like mm, I, I think i don't know it here over here that that well i will go inside again but people yeah. were relaxed people were so lively they were playing with the dog or the, the house cat and they were uh, they're having like real the furniture they're having normal candles burning on the table and that's strictly forbidden in in nursing homes because they say uh, they're afraid that the place will be lit on fire or uh, they had real plants in normal nursing homes they have a lot of plastic plants because they think people are eating plants uh on mass when they get uh, a diagnosed but if you treat people just like normal beings and when you have give them a normal life, you will see that they will start acting more normal in your way. Before we let you go, you know, this film opened uh, the G20 Health Summit last year. And I suppose what I want to find out is what's the reaction been to your film? And do you think changes are coming based on some of the things that you in turn have shown? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Like we had a dream three and a half years ago to bring a hopeful message about dementia uh, to the world stage that actually happened on the 2nd of October, where also our prime minister was Mark Rutte. Uh, he called uh, the documentary a monument for people living with dementia worldwide. So, and the, the, the ministers and the top scientists who were, were all, all there, they were so touched by the movie that they saw that they 
afterwards also we we got we got so many requests from a lot of countries to help think also help them to to change the way our system works and especially how we see uh, people with dementia so on a political level we had unbelievable uh, uh, attention already and then afterwards we uh, went to a, a red carpet premiere in the netherlands in the big theater of amsterdam for, with all the celebrities uh, that you can think of and especially we thought it, it's so important to bring uh, hopeful messages about dementia to the mainstream because it can affect everybody one in five people will get dementia so it's really uh, so important that we start talking about it more often on all the levels even though it's a political level but also in a level of nursing homes but also just the mainstream uh, the consumer the the, the everyday guy uh, or girl they are all uh, are so uh, uh, touched by the bluefy and willing to change so there's a real movement going on in the netherlands and uh, and we really feel the hopeful wind that is blowing uh, through our country, especially after uh, seeing our film. Yeah, wow. It's, again, such a fascinating topic that you have explored in this film. It's called Human Forever. Unfortunately, it's not available to watch in Australia yet, but I understand <laughs> you're yeah. working on that. So please do let us know so that we can share with our listeners when it's available uh, for us here down under to watch. Uh, Jonathan, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. Thank you so much for having me in uh, uh, I really had hope that we can uh, uh, screen the film in Australia uh, very, very soon. That was Sasha's chat with the director of a recent documentary called Human Forever. And as we heard, it's not available in Australia just yet, but we'll let you know just as soon as it is. That's all we have time for today. And we want to hear from you. Send us a DM on Instagram by searching The Briefing Podcast or like or leave a comment, please. Sasha and Antoinette will be back in your feed with the headlines tomorrow morning at six. I'm Ben Sion Siebert. Thanks for listening. Listener.